Hey there, and um, welcome to the A Macintosh channel. Thanks for watching. As always, really appreciate it. Hope you're getting on all right out there. I hope you enjoy my channel. I really hope you find it useful. I've had lots of comments from people recently saying how my channel has really helped their business. It's great to think that sharing my experience in this way is helping other people out there to to uh, make a success of their businesses. So, and don't forget, as always, you know this by now that I categorize everything in the playlists so don't forget to check out the playlists loads more useful information there so um so yeah i hope you enjoy it basically so i wanted to talk about some aspects of doing a quotation and talking to a customer so of course the number one thing to do if you want to win a quotation is always go and meet the customer always go and look at the job in person it's only you looking at that job in person who can make a judgment about some of the difficulties involved how much you should then charge for that job and it's also great to talk to the customer so that you can get an idea of maybe their concerns about different aspects of the job as well you really want to get their point of view so that you can address any questions that they may have about the job it's really important i mean i've been cleaning windows on one side of the street and someone will come out from the other side of the street and ask me and say oh can i clean their windows it's the same as the job i'm cleaning and i will always say okay well i'll come over and have a look for you after i've done this job and we'll confirm the price because nine times out of ten i'll go to that job across the road okay it looks the same as the house i'm cleaning but actually i go around the side and it's got a couple of extra windows around the side that that job didn't have or there's some aspect of it that's more difficult than that job i was doing so i never like to say a price there and then without actually going physically looking at the job just checking it out for myself and that applies to all other aspects of exterior cleaning also that i carry out i have made videos about all the different things that i do from gutter clearing pressure washing even roof cleaning um, window cleaning commercial domestic and the idea of those videos is really to give you a method on how to quote so that you can set a standard of the way that you approach a job and the way that you quote these different jobs because every job might be slightly different you know every pressure washing job is slightly different and you need to have a way to create a standard really for how you approach a quotation it's not to say that there isn't some flexibility within that but it's good to set a method in the first place so if it's gutter clearing you might be pricing per meter of guttering that you're clearing out if it's pressure washing you might be measuring the area and charging per square meter that you're cleaning or if it's window cleaning you might be counting up the windows and charging per window in that way i found a really good little picture recently of um, a diagram of different size windows and the costing of each window according to its size so i'll put that up on the screen that was really a really handy little thing as well but you can also adjust your prices depending on the size of what you're cleaning. So if it's a very large job, you might charge slightly less per meter of guttering per square meter of paving that you're cleaning, slightly less per window. But if it's a smaller job, you might increase that cost per length of guttering. You might increase that cost per square meter of paving that you're cleaning, you might increase the cost per window. So what really helps me is when I go to quote a job, the more experience you have, that really helps the next quote and the next quote. So you might look at a job and you think there's aspects of this job that make it difficult. And you know this from experience. So that you, so you might decide to increase the cost slightly for certain reasons or if you're going to look at a job you might think of other jobs that you do that are similar to that job or other jobs that you've done in the past that are similar to that job and you might think well i priced one like this before there were certain aspects of it that were really difficult and i felt it was underpriced so this one i make sure i quote it at a good price that kind of thing can really help you. So I'm not just going by those quotation methods, but I'm also thinking of other jobs that I've done that are similar. That's helping me make sure I get a good and fair price for the for the work, 
for the job that I'm quoting for. But at the end of the day, it is still up to you what you charge. It's going to be different for everyone. It might be different depending on the area that you live in. Um, kind of cost of living can vary from place to place across the country. So it's up to you to set those boundaries for your business in the area that you live in basically whether you are trying to be a premium service whether you are trying to be more of a budget service um, it depends on you and and how you want to approach things one of the reasons why i think it's really important to have that method in place of of carrying out quotes is because what if someone had recommended you and you didn't realize till later but you'd given them a higher price than their friend who'd recommended you well at least you can say to the customer you, you've quoted by the same method but maybe there were some aspects which made the job more difficult maybe it was more dirty or or whatever it might be and that's why it's slightly more expensive than their friends so at least you can show that you're dealing with uh, each customer in a professional way and that you've got that method in place that you're doing it in in a, in a fair way and then you can explain that to them and they can see that that's the case but you always get people that kind of try it on a little bit try and push you and uh, like to try and bargain with you um, certain people are always fishing for a discount so I think it's really important for you to decide for yourself within your business how you're going to approach that kind of thing as well. I personally don't like to allow a customer to dictate to me the price on any particular job. Um, it's you, it's your business, you've got to decide what you're worth for the quality of job that you are providing. I mean, I like to think that I am offering a good quality service at a reasonable price. I mean, I'm not the cheapest, I don't like to think that I'm probably not the most expensive but I think I'm trying to do a high quality job and I think I'm charging a reasonable price for it for example I had a customer recently asked me to quote for window cleaning he called me from across the road and said his window cleaner hadn't turned up for a long time would I be able to give him a quote so I went round the house looked at the house it was quite a good size counted up the windows and uh, it had a conservatory as well. I quoted him 25 pounds, which I thought was quite reasonable. And it was similar to the jobs I was doing across the road, similar cost, I'd done them for a long time and they were happy with the price as well and the job I was doing. But this chap said it was far too expensive. He said his previous window cleaner was charging 15 pounds. I kind of said to him, well, if it's 15 pounds and the window cleaner hasn't turned up, for a long time then you know maybe there's a reason why he's not turned up because the job's too far too cheap so anyway he wasn't happy about it but in that situation i never will drop my price but one way that i will kind of allow a bit of leeway is if it's window cleaning i'll usually tell the customer what the price is for a, a service that's once a month and they think it's too expensive, well, that's a good example right here to be able to say to the customer, well, how about I did the job for you every two months? Now, every two months at 15 pounds, they're effectively paying 30 pounds for their window cleaning. So if I do it every two months at 25 pounds, well, they're effectively saving five pounds, they're getting a better service and they're saving money. Um, so that's a really good way that I try and allow a bit of leeway with the customer and that can sometimes win over the job. It didn't work in that case but so what I would do I won't drop my price I'll say to the customer okay fair enough well if you want to think about it I'll write it down for you here's my details here's the quote if you need me just let me know. Now I know it's different for different businesses and if you really need the work you might really want the job um, but in my experience, I would strongly suggest that you try not to drop your price. If a customer's being difficult about it, when you first go and see them, when you first go and discuss the quote, they're always going to be difficult. They are always going to want to push you for a cheaper price. You know, you might think, well, I'll offer them a cheaper price and get my foot in the door. But you are always going to have that issue with that customer. 
and you know i've found in the past if i have gone in at a cheap price for a certain job every time they come back to me they always want a cheap price and they're always going to think that i'm going to give them a cheap price so that's why i say set your standards stick to those standards and in the long run that's going to be far more beneficial for your business and you know if a customer will accept you maybe on a two month basis rather than every month they will soon come to realize that you are trying to do a very good job and if they start asking you for other services that you offer as well they always know that you're going to do a good job um, for a decent price so really worth sticking to those those standards the only other way i'll actually offer an incentive on the price is if the customer is asking for multiple jobs to be done so for example if they've asked to clear out the gutters wash down the fascias pressure wash the driveway and clean the windows I'll price up each of those things individually and then I'll offer a discount if they have all of those jobs done um, up to 10% so not a massive discount but just a little incentive for the customer to actually go ahead with all of those jobs and it works out well for me because I'll be in the same place probably for most of the day if not all, the whole day and it saves me on fuel traveling time things like that so it actually works out quite well so that's a good way to offer a bit of a discount to the customer and that kind of thing seems to happen quite a lot in springtime as well and people having a lot of jobs done the other thing that i think is really important is to set minimum pricing as well so if someone asks you to do a small job you want to know what's the minimum price that you'll go to do it what's the minimum price that's going to make it worth your while really so for a pressure washing job for example people have those stone circles in their back gardens sometimes and they've maybe got a bird table in the middle of it or a garden ornament something like that and they just want that circle cleaned well i will set a minimum charge for pressure washing of 95 pounds because well firstly i'm confident of what i can achieve and i can get it looking as good as new but also you know to do that job however small it is i've got to load up the van with the pressure washing equipment i've got to travel to the job i've got to unload the van set up the equipment there's a little bit of fuel cost there maybe some chemicals so there's a few expenses and then by the time i've actually carried out the job packed up loaded up again that's the best part of the morning probably gone really so having minimum charges set out for your business is really important as well so when you go and look at a job you know um, where your parameters are you know what your minimum charge is to make it worth your while going and don't forget that you want to set your minimum charges according to your business in your area and how you want to do things but try and have an idea of these things before you go and speak to the customer so that you have set for yourself what's reasonably sustainable because if you're not careful you'll end up with a lot of work that's priced too low and it's so difficult then to get the prices up to a level that's sustainable you've got to look after your equipment you've got to maintain your vehicle you've got all these kind of costs going on in the background as well and if you're setting your prices too low in the first place you're not going to be able to sustain your business going forward in the future. So it's really important to get those things right. The third thing to keep in mind when you're doing quotes is also how long the job will take, especially for bigger jobs that might be more difficult to quote. Just keep in mind how much you like to make maybe within a day or half a day. And then you can think about how long that job will take you and maybe the the price that you've got in mind you can see if that matches up to how much you'd like to earn in a day so that can be a good way to gauge your quote and whether you think you're along the right lines of a quote especially difficult jobs so if you can keep those three things in mind you've got your method of how you're going to quote that particular type of job if you're thinking of other similar jobs that you've done along the same lines as that and you're thinking about how long the job will take um, those three things really I always keep in mind for every quote and that helps me gauge a good and fair price and it helps me keep all my prices kind of in line with each other as well so I hope there's some good suggestions there for you there's some things that have always helped me in the past with some of my quotations and definitely I would say that the more experience you gain 
you take that forward from each job to the next job. Each job helps grow your reputation. Each job helps grow your experience and you obviously take any difficulties you've had from a previous job you take into the next job. And all of that helps you price jobs as well helps you deal with the customer. I think what's always important for me is to deal with the customer in a professional way. There's a saying, isn't there, that says something is only worth what someone's willing to pay for it. So I always think it's really important to come across in a friendly and professional way. Um, some of those things that I've talked about before, having a professional business image, being polite with the customer, being well presented, having a logo and professional kind of documentation, all of that can help put forward a professional image and that all goes towards helping with the quote as well. So there's a few things to bear in mind. I hope you find that useful. Yeah, I hope you find my channel useful. Don't forget to check out the playlists. There's loads more there. I wish you all the best with your business. Hope things go well and maybe I'll catch up with you again very soon. Thanks for watching.